be on your screens in just a moment. See you after this break. Thank you for joining us. Of course, um, not surprisingly, we'll be talking about COVID all over again. And this time we'll be looking at the new variant or variants as the case may be. We'll start with one. Just one. Start with one. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Because one is one of the names of these variants. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> During the week, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, <clears throat> announced that it had identified six more cases of the B117 COVID-19 variant in the country about a week after the chairman of the presidential task force on COVID announced that the variant <clears throat> is currently causing anxiety in the UK and in other parts of the world. So, of course, Nigeria is among other parts of the world. <clears throat> so now that the new variant is here and the numbers are increasing, what do we do? What do we need to know about this variant? So we'll know exactly what to do. Does our behavior need to change in any way? These and many other questions we're going to ask, ask our panel this morning. And that panel is made up of a lecturer and geneticist, um, Dr. Lushola Shokefu. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you very much for having me. Anytime it's nice we're to be talking here. about COVID, you always oblige us. Thank well, you. Well, we're here to serve. Thank you. And we also have uh, a research fellow at the Department of Biochemistry and Nutrition, and he's also the team lead, Vaccine De Design and Development, Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, Dr. James Ayoride. Good, Good morning. morning. Thank you for Thank having you me. very Thank much you. for joining us. So, Dr. Shokefu, <clears throat> tell us about this new variant. How is it different from the one that we had before? Well, the paradigm that uh, change is the only thing that is constant is uh, typified by viruses the most because continually they must continue to adapt to the environment in which they find themselves. And this adaptation leads to uh, being more effectively transmitted between the, the, the hosts that they have or eluding the um, effect of drugs on them. They must continue to change so that they can be better adapted to cause the havoc they are out to cause. Uh, the genome of the um, COVID virus is a very small 31 kbps unit. And you find that on this small genome, there are several changes that we have noticed as scientists, which seemingly makes the virus better in terms of transmissibility and then in terms of morbidity in uh, the UK. Typically, several have been characterized, but there are three major ones. The P1117, the P1351, and then the B1 in, in Brazil, in the United Kingdom, and then in um, South Africa. And then to a large extent, we should expect more variants because this virus will continue to change in order to make it more, uh, uh, less, the, the system will, be less capable in detecting it so that they can elude the human um, natural method of making sure that it doesn't thrive. And it doesn't so all the research that he is doing, this virus is changing so that it can... Elude, elude. detection, yes. And then become more adaptable so that it can cause more In other words, more harm. the virus itself is carrying out its own research on his research. Ben. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that when we return for this break. Do stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us. We just learned that while Naima is carrying out his own research, they also have a research fellow in the Department of COVID in coronavirus country. <laughs> well, how do, you, how do you respond to that, uh, Dr. Ayorindi? Well, um, as said earlier, the virus will try to adapt, you know, and um, in trying to do that, to evade therapeutics, to evade vaccines, 
But what we need to learn about COVID is that COVID is like a change maker. So we have to learn to change the way we do things in order for us to adapt. Because change is a constant. So I think we are very resistant to change. And if we follow the normal standard COVID-19 protocols, we would have been able to curtail, or we will be able to curtail the activities of this virus almost to the barest minimum, pending the time everyone is vaccinated. So the secret is this. If we follow the COVID-19 protocol properly and get the, um, the populace or the community well vaccinated so that we can achieve herd immunity, we would reduce the chances of the virus to move from one person to another. So we have to be ready to change. But I think we are very resistant to that change. And that's the main problem. From where you stand as a research fellow, what, what, why do you think we are resistant? Um, I, I think part of the problem is we have, aside from COVID pandemic, we also have COVID infodemic, <laughs> whereby you have all sorts of information flying everywhere. So you, some of those information are good, some of them are bad, but we need to learn to get mm -hmm. information from and to trust our authorities. That's one. We, we, trust is earned. But we, let, we'll, we'll trust come, is earned. There's we'll a come trust to that deficit. One. We'll, yes. come, we'll come to that one, you know, but, you know, uh, the, the part of uh, why we are having this death of, of reaction of people's response to the, pro, you know, um, propositions or council of authorities is actually something. You talked about this infodemic. Uh, and it's not only infodemic in terms of COVID-19 alone. It's about virtually everything. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Shukefun, so this is the challenge that we have on our hands. And both of you have uh, underscored you know, the critical characteristics of this B117 that you talked about. Uh, you, you talked about the fact that it has um, three, you talked about three variants. There's Three major variants. Major Three variants, major. okay. Yes. Out of the nine that we say we hear uh, exist, then it, it becomes invisible to even the PCR. No, 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 not, no, not, not invisible not. to the PCR. <laughs> well, but, but this is what we hear about the, the, in England, the spike gene is invisible to the DPCR probe used in England. DPCR probe, not RT-PCR probe. There are two okay. different things. Okay. The RT-PCR has primers that target several as, I mean, uh, segments of the genome. So if it misses one in terms of mutation, it will take the other. Okay. So the active PCR is super, and it will just work. Which is what we are using. Which in is Nigeria. what we are using. Of so, course, in China, for instance, there are 20 approved test methods from anosmia and loss of smell, which is 98% uh, correlated in, I mean, infection cases and all that. But the CDC, NCDC in Nigeria says we must not use anything besides these two methods, the active PCR and I think the antigen, antigen. test and all that. So uh, it doesn't mean that with the mutation, it evades detection by the RT-PCR system. It doesn't okay. mean that. So for us in Nigeria, we can say safely that it is still detectable. Well, of course, if but, we use the RT-PCR. Okay. Yes. But the information that is also available mm -hmm. to us, which you all would also want to verify, is that the discovery was confirmed in Oshun and Kwara states. Now, they are not the epicenters. Yes. How severe a problem do we have? given that those areas are perhaps some of those places in which people do not pay much attention to all these um, non-pharmaceutical interventions Protocols. that you have recommended. Mm. It doesn't make it uh, more severe. I mean, it just means that we must pay more attention to the non-pharmaceutical protocols. Mm. This is the principal thing. Uh, we tend to believe that once vaccines come, we solve the problem. No. Well, you, you agree with me? My, my apologies. We'll, we'll come to that one. But yes. what we have been made to understand by some of the research available out there, you may also want to correct it if it's mm -hmm. not correct, yes. that this one is a little... Increased mobility. Is, yes. Yes. So, so prevent the thing from getting from one man to another by using non, no, the non-pharmaceutical protocols. It's simple. So Make sure it doesn't get from the person... Person A to, yeah, to, to another person, person B. B. That solves the problem. So, in other words, we should just adhere to those protocols strictly. Exactly. That's, well, that's the challenge is there, Alero, hmm. uh, Dr. Shok and uh, Dr. Yorindi. The challenge is there that people are not abiding Adhering. by these things. It's, it's uh, common with uh, pandemics. And I'll give you an, an instance. If, um, I mean, I was in Hong Kong for some time, 
There is a mosquito variant that causes chikungunya um, fever. Yeah, Aedes aegypti, albopictus, and all that. Anytime I find it in my room, I make sure I kill it because I can see it physically. But you cannot see the virus physically. So to a large extent, you only tend to believe the things you see more. That's the reason why in the villages you find people in the evenings burning orange pills to scare away mosquitoes. mosquitoes. But these are viruses that nobody has seen. So the conjecture is there that oh, COVID, does it exist? Is it there at all? It's a big problem. And yeah. anyway, the, the president came out with uh, regulations last week. Um, have you seen that this is having any effect on the people? Are they adhering more to these protocols? Well, um, forcefully, people are beginning to adhere because <laughs> we saw over the news on some closures that happened in Abuja. So forcefully, forcefully, people would have to adhere. But we need to get more information out there. And for those of us who knows much about the virus, always go about with your face mask. Even if you want to go and receive somebody by, at your, by your gate. Because many times, maybe the person comes, I just want to go to, if I'm doing anything outside my house, once I step out of my door, it's like this. And <laughs> once it's like this, you know, people around me would say that, ah, what's wrong with this guy? Uh, you just want to get a loaf of bread down the street. Why are you wearing face mask? Mm. Have you seen anybody dying <laughs> here? Nobody's, but the truth is, the more you do it, you sensitize others to do it. And uh, no face masks, no entry into my home. <laughs> it's simple. Mm. And let's minimize parties, you know, gatherings. You know, we are fond of, oh, um, it's just... Ten of us. It's just uh, we are not many, you know. It's just, but the truth is, it's not for you. I'm not using this face mask just for myself. I'm using it for the people that I love because you don't know the person you're going to give it to, that you're going to end the person's life. So why do you want to be a murderer by going about? Because you could be asymptomatic, right? I could right? be asymptomatic, but I've been sorry, <laughs> I've been <laughs> tested, <laughs> and I'm negative at this moment. No, no, no. I mean, this, no, just this, for the sake yes, of viewers. Yes. Mm. But the truth is. <laughs> Wear it because of the people that you love, hmm. the breadwinners of your home, yes. um, your boss. At times, if I feel sick, I get scared to go to my boss's office. Not because he would chastise me, but that's my boss. If anything goes wrong with my boss, it, a lot would happen to <laughs> whether I like it indirectly. To your pot of soup. <laughs> to my pot of soup. <laughs> there, 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 also, there, are, there are two other sides to that. It's a tripod that needs three legs to stand. Okay. The government hasn't put in the third leg. Uh, the masks must be provided free. That's very, very important. In, in, Singapore, week, didn't we? in Singapore, in Hong Kong, at each bus terminal, you can pick a mask and then put it on. I mean, uh, um, first, uh, there are, uh, three things come to my mind now the president's uh, protocols, uh, regulations, the you know, COVID 19 vaccines. And um, uh, something that uh, Bill Gates was, you know, uh, ascribed to Bill Gates uh, concerning our infrastructure. But let me start with the trust, you know, quotient that we, um, Dr. Ayurinde, talked about the other time. Um, so that quotient, that deficiency in the trust quotient is there in anyone in authority in Nigeria. It doesn't seem like it, that, that one is going anywhere. It's now, not. on the one hand is that trust deficiency. On the other hand, is the government's regulation and um, enforcement, so to speak. Where are we? Well, enforcement, you can give instructions in Abuja. How does it get to my hometown in Agawe, for instance? Mm -hmm. How do you affect it in Agawe? How are you sure that people are not going to take advantage of that? I'm sorry, some persons in authority may just get on the street and begin to arrest people mm -hmm. and then take money from them without enforcing that they put on the mask. There's also this side to it. If I wear my mask and I go to a Kiani market and I have the virus on the mask and I get to my house and I dispose him properly, it's like six and half a dozen taking it from a Kiani and then coming to dump it at home where to infect people. You must also educate people on the proper disposal of the mask. That's also very, very important. You go around from 8 a.m. to about 5 and then you dispose the mask improperly. That's Inadvertently, you are also going to be infecting people in your locality. Dr. Henry, there's something that Dr. Tomori, Professor Tomori you know, recommended in all of this conversation when we asked him about the regulations of the president. And he said, perhaps we should even begin with persuasive communication. Yes. 
I, I, I think what we can actually achieve, we would achieve more with persuasive communication. So we need a lot of influencers, you know, maybe uh, online or media influencers. Um, um, sorry, social media influencers, as people may have to call them, um, to see how we we can educate people on the dangers, dangers you know, associated with COVID-19, and how we can just use simple methods. And I must say, I must say that we did very well in the first wave, you know, by trying, even though it turned out to be <laughs> a monster at the end of the day. But if we can just follow the simple protocols, get more educated, as um, as said. Um, on how to use the max. Uh, someone like me, I have um, I have a spray in my car in my office. So if I'm remo removing my face mask, I spray it, and I, I spray it. I put it down. So in in my home, we spray our face masks with seventy percent ethanol. In the car, I spray. If you get it, it's always by my side. So you spray it, you put it, at times I put it on my dashboard for heat to even sun. help <laughs> for the sun. <laughs> to kill whatever is there. <laughs> whatever is there. Because even as it is now, I can't just drop it on this table because yeah. I have to disinfect. Oh. So when I'm leaving here, I have to put a lot of hand sanitizers on my hand, on my palm rather, and take a small swipe over or wipe over um, my face mask. So we need more education, more education. And we need to learn to seek information from the right authorities. Because like I said, many times we have agencies that can give appropriate information. Many times you see something over the news and you're shocked that, ah, but this is not the truth about this that you're seeing. So obviously people are not getting the right information they are supposed to get. Nonetheless, the trust deficit, I know that is always there. But we should also encourage, you know, getting the right information from the right authorities. Part of the information that is out there is also about nutrition. Um, some have said that, look, uh, in, during that first wave that you talked about, and the number of prominent Nigerians were being reported to be positive to COVID-19, they will say, you know, they, they took this thing or they applied this... Uh, um, string or stream of uh, nutritional elements and then this is what they produce. How helpful is that in the, in the fight? Well, of course, nutrition is always helpful in the fight of any disease <laughs> that you have so as to boost your immunity. And um, you all, of course, you also need good rest in, and a proper well-being. But nonetheless, you can't, we, like I said, the infodemic aspect, you, uh, there has to be proper data for you to give out any information to the public. Somebody says we use X product. The question is, do we have sufficient scientific data? Yes, the product could be working. I'm not saying the products may not be, may or may not be working, but we need to work on data to be able to say categorically, based on the data that we have, this is working. So we can't say because somebody said, I use this, and the person is prominent. We say, oh, let us all face <laughs> that aspect. Mm. So it might just be the issue of the Madagascar case, <laughs> where the president came on air and drank <laughs> the Mad Madagascar cocktail, and everybody followed him. But the question is, we should be asking, do we have the data? Can we see the data? How reliable is the data? Because data is very important. In parenthesis, since you mentioned the, um, the cocktail, we heard that some of it was sent to Nigeria and it was being tested. Uh, we have not heard the outcome of that. Yes, so that's part of asking the right authorities <laughs> <laughs> for some of the outcome. <laughs> um, yes. It's not your institute that's working on that. Well, we, we, we worked partly on it. Okay. And at the time it was sent, we had not grown the virus. Okay. Because if you want to test it at times, you want to see how you would reduce the growth of the virus in the lab first. But we don't have, then you, you have to do some other tests that, you know, other level of test that relies on you having the technical expertise to grow the virus which we've been able to do now. So as, as at that time, we could only do safety studies, how safe it is. 
efficacy is a, is a big problem because, and after doing the laboratory experiments, don't forget that we have the clinical aspect, the clinical trials, which is a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of energy that you may not get the desired result in the short time that the world was, you know, anxious to say that, oh, it's working, it's, it's working. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have seen the video that's making the rounds on social media where a guy is asking questions about the vaccine. Yeah, I've seen it. seen it. I've seen it, yeah. So he asks a, a question such as, so if I, if I take the vaccine, can I catch it again? And the answer is no. If I do this, can I get reinfected? You know, all kinds, and the answers, all the questions he asked to all of them, the answer was no. And of course, at the end of it all, his question is, so why should I take the vaccine? Mm. I did say that with the vaccine, it's not Hulu yet. I just said that if the vaccine is 80% effective, you need to vaccinate the 60% of the population to just say that at least we are at a modicum level. If it's 60% effective, you need to take about 90% of the population. So the vaccine is not all there is. The vaccine will, to a large extent, uh, reduce the, the severity if you are infected. If ever you get infected, at least the severity of the infection will be modified. That is guaranteed. So let us not bother. So eradicated. So vaccines don't eradicate. Vaccines, to a large extent, I mean, have a way of reducing the, the severity. Just in case you are, should or in case. So we should have reduced mortality. Well, of course, reduced when, mortality. In fact, reduced severity. You may not even get out of your house to treat it if you are vaccinated. Okay. That is assured. Okay. I mean, with all vaccines. Let me tell you that there's a, uh, principles of immunogenicity with vaccines. There are strains. A vaccine that is effective for strain A may not be effective for strain B. Raising that other problem. Raising another problem entirely. <laughs> so we have to start afresh because all of the vaccines, all of the research no, no, that no, it's, it's, produced it's, it's an now, unfolding scenario yes. that we must continue to yes. research, let us, research and let, follow. As, as, mm. as neophytes, as naive people, let us ask those <laughs> trivial questions. <laughs> so we have been... The vaccine that is out now is for the first strain. I'm not saying that conclusively. I'm just saying that there's a problem of immunogenicity with vaccines generally. If it's effective for strain A, it may not be effective for strain B. We are saying the same so, thing, sir. So, <laughs> it may not. <laughs> no, he said, he yes. said may. May. So, may is a month. Oh, sorry. Uh, First and foremost, <laughs> I think the, uh, I'll, I'll like to contribute to what he has said in the sense that um, the last, why should I take the vaccine? I think the person should take the vaccine. The reason is this. Once you get infected with, a, with an infectious agent or a pathogen or the virus, let's use the word the virus, you develop immunity, right? And we've discovered that over the time, maybe for like six, eight months, you could have antibodies. Those are the soldiers that help fight against infection. And at maybe some time, it begins to wane. The antibodies, that's what we've seen. And that's why people can be reinfected, reinfected. with COVID. Mm. So the fact that you've had COVID before does not mean that you, you will not have, have it again. You will not have it again. <laughs> so what the vaccine usually will do is to help raise the soldiers. Okay. So that if I have taken the vaccine and I've never been in infected, I'll have the soldiers raised. So if I meet somebody like, I'm sorry, <laughs> if he's asymptomatic, then the soldiers will be able to fight the virus immediately. And if I meet him, I will not be able to transmit the virus to him yeah. because the soldiers would have held the virus captive in mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And by so doing, we've done something. We've broken the chain of transmission. Okay. And achieved the herd immunity. And achieved the herd immunity we're talking about. But to not think that the vaccine, like what he has said, would protect you forever. Or the, it may not. It may not. Okay. <laughs> but isn't All right. That, isn't that part you. of the... My, okay. my apologies, Alara. Hmm. Isn't that also part of the, 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 the... There's a little bit of a problem in that. So, because we have heard professionals like you tell us that you need to take two shots within X... Space of it, time. it depends on what vaccine you are taking. Okay. The recent okay. Johnson and Johnson vaccine, you Just only need one, one, one shot. One yeah. shot. You only need one shot. Five, and that's five, that's five, also two. yeah, that's also uh, more suited for uh, uh, environment, environment because it doesn't need the minus seventy um, 
uh, temperature to keep it. To keep. Okay. So it's currently being um, put forward for emergency authorization use, and that will come up sometime next week and all that. Okay. So we can expect it in the coming weeks. Now, Doctor, in the last um, four to six weeks, uh, there's been talk about this, what I have decided to call a magic drug that seems to work wonders when it comes to COVID-19, ivermectin. Yes. Yes. Tell us about ivermectin, because some doctors have said that it, they used to use it to treat uh, oncosarcosis. You well, know, it was for the treatment of worms. Yes. So how come it seems to be so effective? I came across ivermectin in 1994. Mm. Late Professor Eugene Ogumba mm. was in charge of the oncosarcosis control program in the Southwest, and I worked closely with him. Ivermectin has been uh, recently found to have a three-pronged approach of in stopping the vi virus from multiplying. So if the viral load is minimal, of course you are not likely to come up with the disease. It's, I mean, you are pegging the population from coming up. Mm -hmm. And it's been tested. There are, uh, I mean, several pub I mean, publications that indicate that mm -hmm. currently. Uh, it's, it may not be the magic drug, but I mean, in principle, it's been used in India, in the UK, in US, and all that. And they are finding that it's been um, fairly effective in reducing the viral load. The problem is that once the virus gets in and it begins to multiply, then it will go across the system, get on the lungs and all that. If you can get a drug that stops it from multiplying, then the, I mean, the, the, the severity will be minimized until okay. the body is able to fight it. The discussion on ivermectin is not, is not over yet, but we need to take a short break. There's okay. still plenty we want to talk about that drug. See you after this break. Thank you for staying with us. Still on ivermectin, Dr. Shokefu. There's also plenty of talk about its prophylactic use. Please advise us on that. Nobody should use any drug without doctors. the doctor's prescription. Okay. <laughs> I, I must say that with a lot of emphasis. Nobody must use anything apart from taking water <laughs> without doctor, doctor's prescription. That's also very, very important. Okay. Uh, on the other side of it, there's the corollary is that the government must also do its bit to be updated. There are so many things that are coming up, intubation, uh, evacuation of uh, uh, what you have in the lungs so that the person can breathe better and all that. These are advances that are coming up in India and elsewhere as an indication of infection so that you don't need to use the RT-PCR and all that. Correlation is about 98% between the anosmia and the RT-PCR, so it's cheaper, less than 20 naira and all that. I mean, these are things that we must continue to walk along with so that we are not dependent on somebody in Badagri running to Ikeja to have a test. Mm. I mean, that's not... That's not um, there, there is also uh, that conversation that was initiated. Are you down about this... Uh, for I me, mean, accused again. There's also this conversation, you know, that was initiated, well, along this whole fight as well. And that is the improvement of health infrastructure in the country. Of course, the PTF chairman had said that he didn't know that we had such a, the, the, the problem of um, um, health infrastructure was as vast and big and large as it was when he became PTF, you know, COVID-19 chairman. But as a result of that, you know, Bill Gates was quoted as saying that he would suggest that Africa, of course, including Nigeria, should prioritize improving health infrastructure in the country as opposed to buying or getting the vaccines. Prioritize health infrastructure over the vaccines. How would you react? I, I just said that, that with the vaccine, it's not yet to huru. So health infrastructure is important. In the surveillance, genomic surveillance system of the UK, there are about 600 institutions checking for variants and their adverse effects. Are we doing that in Nigeria? Hmm. The universities are typically, uh, I'm sorry to say this, like glorified secondary schools, typically by, by European standards. So the universities must also, to a large extent, be uh, empowered to be able to do research. Training in virology, bioinformatics, genomics, these are things that are not just in place in Nigerian universities. We know a lot of the theory, but the practical thing is not there. Well, talking mm -hmm. about theory, Dr. Ayorinde, it brings us to the research end. Um, um, 
a good number of people, including, of course, you know, Naima, Naipri, Nafdak, every one of them is coming up with one, you know, measure of research or the other. I remember, was it two weeks ago, we had the Nafdak DG who was saying that even though people say that certain nutritional um, stuff that we have in Africa, local nutrition, are good to fight some diseases, the, 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 the challenge we have with that is in both the facts of it and the data of it. And you have also talked about that one. So talking about you know, improving the health infrastructure, uh, what is our capacity versus our deliverable in terms of funding for research in our country? Oh, thank you very much. Um, like, I, like I said, COVID is a game changer. It should be a game changer. <laughs> it should be. No, no, but to a certain extent, oh, it's, it's, it's you don't believe changed. it is yet. Not we it. didn't have a lot of, we had very few PCR labs in the country pre-COVID. But now you have RT-PCR almost everywhere in the country. But we should also take um, note of that. We are more of a responding society. We are not a preparing society. So we are responding to COVID and we want miracles to happen now. It's not possible. Let's be honest with ourselves. The, the vaccines you have ready out there, they've been working on them for like 10 years. You have um, some research products that we have, they've been on them for like 10 years. Yes, what have we been doing in the past so many years? Of course, we have our challenges. But now that COVID has come, like what's happened in China, like I was telling him before, before we got in here that when SARS came to China, the Chinese government began to invest heavily in bioinformatics, um, genetic sequencing, um, you know, they, they started seeing the biotech industry as an opportunity for growth, which is now what China has now. So we also have to see the, the case of COVID, COVID, aside from the bad side, also see the good side and take advantage, whereby universities can be empowered to do a lot of research. Imagine if a um, university like Lasso could handle sero -epid or epidemiological surveillance around Badagri axis or yeah. Jaw axis. Where you have massive population. Where you have massive population. Massive in clusters. You have the one in Ekpe doing something. You have all the near tertiary healthcare institutions mm. doing one, empowered to do one thing or the other. Yes. But the truth is, most of these things cannot happen overnight because we know where we are all coming from. Mm. So we have to take advantage of the situation and see how everybody, could, everybody can come together, both government, um, private individuals like the BioNTech vaccine, designed by a private firm, not by the government, hmm. right? The best that the government will do is to provide an enabling environment, hmm. protect hmm. your market, hmm. so that you can reap your investment. So it's not just looking at it from the healthcare. Yeah. We have to look at it holistically and take advantage of this issue. But Dr. Ayaride, um, you will agree that in Nigeria, uh, we're all waiting for government to fund research. And that is not what, is, what obtains in other places. There's plenty of private sector participation in this area. How do you think that we can encourage private sector to show more interest in research so that we can get the kind of environment you're talking about? Um, I, I think the private sector should, first and foremost, like I said, education. We need to see the biotech industry as a new opportunity, like the, um, this, this fintech. Fintech came in, fintech became a new opportunity, and everybody is investing in fintech now. So biotech is a new opportunity, and people should ask questions. I give you this X amount of money. Since the money is not coming from the government, I expect you to be able to deliver in this amount of time. What can we get out of it? How can government help us protect it if we get something out of it? Mm -hmm. So I think the private, but you know, the private companies too would say that we have a lot of challenges, financial challenges and all of that. But the truth is, if we don't produce anything, we would forever be dependent. Mm. These problems will persist. <laughs> <laughs> this is looking like uh, a vicious cycle, cycle to me, yes. So I will keep saying government, government, <laughs> if, government. If the environment is not there for them to do business and thrive, they will not have the money, extra money, 
to invest in, Absolutely. So, in research. So that's another circle. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Dr. Shokafu, yes, uh, still talking about the same research and solutions and futuristic uh, perspe perspectives. I don't know which of um, the people in your industry said, let f your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. We know that in Africa, <laughs> there is quite a lot. I was with a friend yesterday who was telling me that there, there is a particular kind of plant that grows, guess where? Beside drainages in Africa. But that in Asia, it is what they consume the most as, as medicinal, of high medicinal value for certain medical conditions. And we have these things in abundance in, in Nigeria and in Africa and things like that. So in terms of research in nutritional medicine, uh, what, do you see a future for us there? Because you would agree with it, may agree with the number of people who have said that there are quite elderly people who had this information. Many of them have passed on uh, with all of this wonderful information and they, they weren't able to impart them to anyone. So in terms of tracking all these things for future use, where do you see us? Do you see any, any opportunity for us? Do you see any orientation in the mind of any one agency or individual to go in that trajectory? Well, it's about the government taking the lead, although they must be propped by the um, other sectors, the universities, the research sector, and all that. Let me digress a bit. Look at the amount of money we spend in importing pineapples from Benin Republic. Oh my God. The, the, the Benet Republic type of pineapple. <laughs> Look at the amount of money we spend in importing methionine and lysine for the uh, poultry industry. Look at the amount of money we spend in importing fish meal from Denmark. And we've been doing this for 40, 50 years. Wow. And there's no government, um, what's it called, plan in place. You know, to make sure that this doesn't happen. Fish meal we can replace by several other things that we can culture in Nigeria. So there must be uh, people in government who know what we should do. That's, that's, that's very, very important. But Let me also give another example, maybe not very congruent. I bought uh, a bag of rice as a child in the Gobi College, the commodities market, at about 20, 25 naira at that time. And then we opened our eyes wide, and rice became 27, 28,000 naira. When you have... Several localities or locations in Nigeria that are growing the local rice that we can improve or may have been improved across the 30 years. But we are not doing anything. So we are dependent on France, I mean, I mean on India, Thailand. Thailand, and all that mm. for rice. Imagine what amount of money we spend in getting this. But thing. going to what Alero said the other time about the private sector taking initiative, yes. um, if we have an, a private sector um, interest or investor that says, okay, Rather than wait on, on, on Denmark and all these other countries for these uh, things that you talked about, fish meal, uh, fish food, methionine, lysine, all, all those know? things, yeah, yeah. what if a, a private sector person watching us right now would say, wow, I didn't know that was happening, I could take a lead in this. What would it take for them? What, what, what do they need to know? What are the opportunities? Uh, when someone who knows what he's doing, principally, some element of putting pen to paper to make sure that both ends are guaranteed. So that's that's also G to G. Very, yes. That's also very, very important. If I'm putting 50 million, I want to be sure that I don't get midway and I'm swindled. And then the appropriate government <laughs> policy. That's also very, very important. Very, very, very important. If the government isn't backing the whole thing, yeah. it will crumble across time. So the government has to put, put a policy. Yes, policy. yes. Yes. Is it a problem of policy now or, com or enforcement of those policies or execution of those policies? No, no even, even from the conceptualization. All of the above. Most persons in government don't know what government is supposed to be doing. Uh -oh. I say that with a lot of emphasis. Most persons in government don't know what government and governance is all about. Why will you allow our universities to be in this state after 40 years, 50 years of university education when in these doldrums up until now? And it's after a shame. you have had universities that have been among the best in the world. In those days, people used to come to UCH for treatment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reverse is the case now. Interesting. Oh, okay. Um, just, just before we call it a day, um, we have been told that Ewedu does fantastic things to the body concerning COVID. How true is that? 
They will do. It's good. Brafilum is good. What's Demo that? What's bra Brafilum. Um, um, I've forgotten the Yoruba name. We used to put it in our books in those days, and then it grew the Adventitious roots. Uh, there's a Yoruba okay, okay. name for it. Well, well. It will do is good. Brafilum is good. Lemongrass is good because it has zinc. What the virus does is that it knocks out the prosthetic group, the iron prosthetic group. Mm -hmm. So if zinc is present, it stops it from doing this. Mm -hmm. It is not to be relied on totally, <laughs> and then you don't wear your mask. Or... <laughs> what about lemon? <laughs> lemon grass, I said that. Lemon grass, lemon no, is you good. You said lemon grass. Lemon is also good because of vitamin C. What about C. lemon itself? Yeah, it's good because okay. of vitamin C. Okay. What you are doing by that is to um, shut up your immune system, shield or in case anything comes mm. in. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So Dr. now we're going to run out of lemon. Okay. Olusha. We have already. <laughs> Dr. Olusha Lashoke from Lecturer, Lasso, and the Geneticist. Thank you very much for coming, as well as Dr. James Ayori, the Research Fellow at the Department of Biochemistry and Nutrition, and he's also Team Leader, Vaccine Design and Development, Nigeria Institute of Medical Research. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. I Alex. think that we, we are better enlightened. Absolutely. for having you this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sunrise will be back in just a moment with another interesting conversation. Please join us.